Okay, good afternoon. It is December 6th, 2018. We're here today with Mark Parker, who happens to be the Whitley County Historian. I'm Deb Lawrence, and this is for the Peabody Public Library Oral History Project. Good morning, Mark. Well, good morning. afternoon by right. now. Yes. Just, just, <laughs> just slightly after. So, what would you like to tell us about Whitley County? Um, I thought about this and, 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 and figured I would tell you basically from my memories of it. That's and, great. And, That's great. Um, my earliest memories are probably from the late 50s, early 60s, mm -hmm. when my grandmother, who lived on North, North uh, Main Street, which was just a block from the edge of town at that point in at time. At that point, yeah. Um, we would go walking uptown. And uh, my grandmother, Ruth Bowling, uh, grandmother taught me manners because she watched me while mom was, while mom and, and dad were working. Um, and I think probably stems from her childhood when um, the streets were muddy, but I, I learned to walk on the outside of the sidewalk and always let the let the the woman or the lady walk on uh -huh. the inside and i believe it was probably because of the mud that was splashed and mm. so that was the reasoning but that's one of the early early memories is mm -hmm. is my grandmother and i walking on the the big long walk which was probably only six or seven <laughs> blocks uptown and when we go uptown there were several places that we usually stopped one was walker's confectionery which is in the 100 200 block of west van buren mm -hmm. um the building itself i think is has been redone there's i believe there's a law office there okay. now but that used to be walker's confectionery which was um a little lunch stand and that's where we got comic books Oh! because the comic books there were started out my first comic books were a dime and then they went to 12 cents and oh. that was a big jump at that point in time but but grandma would get uh, grandma and I would get a comic book we cross the street then and go down to um, what was the Rexall drugstore which is then was um, where Tagmar's Hardware, mm -hmm. the one half of Tagmar's Hardware was, which I believe now is Chapman's um, uh, Tap Room, mm. and um, we would get a uh, we would get a lemon Coke at, oh. at their lunch stand. Uh, they had a little fountain area there at the drugstore. Um, one of the things that I was thinking about as, as I was getting ready for this was um, the buildings that are not there anymore, the, the vacant lots that right. are in downtown. One of them on the corner, which would be the east, the northeast corner of uh, Maine and Van Buren, used to be the old it was citizen state bank yes and one of the earliest memories uh, again of what happened there was uh in their lobby at christmas time there was a, a life-size moving santa claus and at the base of the santa claus was a cardboard box that had been wrapped and always had um, little small candy canes in it mm. so it was nice when we always went to the bank to do any banking, you would go into this Santa Claus would be moving its arms and, and swiveling and would have the, the little wrapped candy canes at the bottom, so you always got the candy mm -hmm. canes. Um, another of the empty the empty blocks or the buildings that are vacant now vacant lot now was at the corner of Line and Van Buren where there was a fire. Squire's Jewelry Store was there, and then there was um, Mike's Barber Shop, and there was a, a fix-it shop that, mm -hmm. that was um, um, uh, refrigeration and, and appliances. And I believe Jim Kreider and I were the last two people out of that building. We had stopped and were helping them cart things out of, mm -hmm. out of, uh, out of the um, out of the building to get things out 
because the fire had started up into the roof and into the roof area and we were waiting for uh, they were still able to get in and out of the building mm -hmm. and we were carting some things out of the refrigeration some parts and stuff out to try to get them out as much out as mm -hmm. we just helping out and we saw the flames break through the roof and the reflection off of the Montgomery Ward store across the street. Oh. So we dropped everything and ran like crazy to get out of the to get wow. out of the uh, out of the building. Um, that's a, that one's empty. I, yeah. uh, another space was the old Tully Mansion, which was home to uh, Demoni's funeral home. Mm. Um, my wife and I lived probably two blocks from there at the time. I never heard a thing. It burned in, during As the night. You lived that close to the fire yes. and it just went away? Yeah, didn't hear a away. thing. Didn't hear a thing. We were wow. on Wayne Street, which was like two blocks down mm -hmm. and, and, and never heard a thing. But it was a beautiful old home. Yes. Um, and uh, unfortunately, now that lot is a parking lot. Um, the... Uh, Next door, there still remains the old ambulance bays that are now part of uh, Bell Tower auctions. Their back, their back area oh, still has the old, that. the brick part of that. It's now a, uh, a sheet metal mm -hmm. building in the front, but in the back is a uh, uh, is brick, and that was the old ambulance bays because all the funeral homes had their own ambulances at that time. They would run the ambulance service. And so they had the, the, the bays for those were, are still back there. I didn't um, realize yes. that. Um, let's see, what else? Um, those, three, those three places are now vacant, mm -hmm. vacant lots. Um, and most of, the peop most of the people now don't, unless you're of my age or, mm -hmm. or that, don't remember those buildings that were there. Citizen State Bank became Citizens National Bank, then they moved across the street, which was the old Columbia Theater. Um, one of the first movies I went to by myself there was in 1965, and I went to see Here Come the Beatles. Oh my. <laughs> uh, yes, um, so that, that kind of dates me, but my, my parents had taken me to see Old Yeller there when I was, when I was even younger, but yes, the old Columbia Theater. Now, my understanding, my grandfather, Earl Bowling, was helped with the projection that there was a second movie theater um, that was further west um, on, um, further west on Van Buren Street, and that this that there was a, actually was a second movie theater in town for a while. Um, as Whitley County historian, I've been finding little tidbits here and there um, of, of things that went on. Down on the end of Factory Street was where the original um, uh, Oriental Show You uh, uh, soy sauce mm -hmm. factory was. And in doing some research on that, we found out that um, Mr. Oki, who ran the, ran the place, was, uh, that that was the first, the first facility for brewed soy sauce in the United States. <clears throat> and that innovative, he was very innovative, mm -hmm. that he had um, um, instituted profit sharing with his, his, with his employees, clear back. Yes, clear back then, um, had gardens planted out in front mm -hmm. of it. Down on the end of what's now Factory Street was was where it was. Where uh, one of our one of our projects that that I've been that I've proposed that we're working on is to get a um, a historical marker for that mm -hmm. area. Um, he was a very interesting person who'd come early to this country. Um, uh, he ended up. Uh, as a as an avid golfer, oh. uh, he actually died on died on the oh. golf course of a heart attack out at Crooked Lake. His home was next to uh, Crooked Lake Golf Course, and he was uh, uh, that's now uh, Bill Shoemaker's home. Mm -hmm. um, but that was that was there. Um, 
the, one of the other things is that I've noticed over the years is the loss of the uh, a lot of the neighborhood schools. Mm -hmm. um, I went to Etna Troy, um, and and for a while we lived out at Goose Lake, which was the resort area was mm -hmm. down below, and we lived up on the hill. Um, but there was public swimming, public swimming at Goose Lake. But uh, we moved for a year uh, in between the house at Goose Lake and the house out on 109, um, and lived across, uh, rented a house on the outskirts of Etna. Uh, that was across from, you could see the steps of, of the old Etna school, oh. uh, which was all that was left. Mm -hmm. uh, Thorn Creek is gone now. When we moved to 109, I went to Thorn Creek, which I remember as before the new parts were added yeah. on, um, um, that the wooden floors would creak. The principal's office was right next to the boys' bathroom, which I thought was kind of a unique <laughs> placement. But um, uh, yeah, we uh, uh, and the wooden the old wooden floors that creaked in the older part of the building, and that building's gone now. Yeah. Um, Columbia Township uh, was on one corner of the land that Indian Springs Middle School holds now. And, Columbia Township is gone. It had the it had low ceilings, and when we played volleyball or volleyball there, um, uh, you had to watch out for the watch out for the ceilings. Oh, you pop the tiles uh, out. Yeah, the same thing. <laughs> same thing at Thorn Creek. Thorn Creek's gym was sunken down in, and it had such a low ceiling that if you shot from behind the the uh, circle, the free throw circle. Mm -hmm. Uh, you probably couldn't shoot from back there because the ceiling was so low that to arch the ball it would oh. hit the ceiling. Um, we went from we went from there uh, again. Some of the Marshall Marshall Memorial, mm -hmm. the old, which was oh, I'm going to get this wrong. Um, yes, but anyway, the old Marshall Memorial mm -hmm. gym was on a was on a and it was on the stage which was mm -hmm. raised mm -hmm. and you would go through there uh, it was kind of scary sometimes down at the edge but a beautiful place I mean you had the auditorium it, it was obvious that it was an old high school because mm -hmm. of the size of, of things um, when they renovated and turned it into the Marshall uh, the Marshall uh, Middle School um, one of the support beams for the old stage uh, was is still runs through the ceiling. Oh, really? Um, yes. The, uh, the if you go in there, you'll notice that there is a that there's a large central beam that mm -hmm. runs. Uh, the court now runs north and south. The court used to run east and west, and that beam was the edge of the stage. The the court was actually to the north wow. of that mid court line. And again it was the same situation there that playing volleyball that, that beam would come into play. Uh, it's kind of interesting some of those gyms and, and the buildings that, that aren't there anymore, Coesi, where the out of bounds lines were you had to stand you had to stand sideways to uh, get the ball and play on the one end, on the stage end. Um, Kwesi's gone. Kwesi's been renovated now, and that gym is that gym is gone. Um, the uh, Jefferson Center building is closed. Washington Center is closed. Um, several of them have been turned into community centers. I know Etna and Washington. And, and that's a good use for them, but it, it's kind of, uh, we remember all the, 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 uh, the Whitley County middle schools or grade schools playing each other in mm -hmm. basketball oh, yeah. and track and, and such and having coached in that system, in, those, in that system. You can remember some of, the, some of the kids who came through there that were really quite, quite good athletes that uh, went, on to, went on to the high school here. Um, and changes in the high school. It was kind of interesting <laughs> when they when they were talking about building the new high school, which will open in in um, in, a, in a year or so. Um, they were speaking of 
what's always been called the new part of the existing <laughs> high school. Well, the new part was built when I was a freshman uh, mm. in, in 1967 is when it started. <laughs> so the new part is, yes, is, is quite a few years old, but that's always been, that's everybody's Forever always called ever. it the yep. new part. Um, uh, it's amazing how some of the things have changed, buildings that, that were downtown that have been repurposed for other things. We were always remember the Garden Gift, mm -hmm. the Garden Gift Shop, which is now, what is it now? Um, it's it's in that block of, of, of Van Buren Street. Mm -hmm. um, yes, um, Strauss's, uh, Strauss's menswear. Mm -hmm. uh, Schultz's. Wonderful, wonderful characters. Uh, Bud Strauss, oh, yeah. uh, Bud and, and his and, and Abe uh, Strauss. You could go in there, and Bud would uh, friendliest person you'll ever want to meet. Bud would would give you details. You learned that you were supposed to show a little bit of of shirt sleeve outside your coat. Uh, Bud would say a gentleman always shows a little bit of lace. Um, and 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 but tailoring services and 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 a group of people who who were just always there. Mm -hmm. um, Schultz's mm -hmm. uh, five and ten cent store. I never met a person named Schultz there. No, nope. but uh, uh, Schultz's dimes. It was just always the dime store. Going to the dime store, mm -hmm. the candy counter. Um, and the, again, the wooden floors, mm -hmm. and uh, just a, a a small town atmosphere to it. And you go down the block to Roffer's Hardware, and and Roffer, the Roffer family also owned a brewery, which the last bricks of it are along what used to be railroad tracks there on um, South Whitley Street, just right across from the Bluebell, mm -hmm. uh, which has been repurposed. Yeah. My, uh, I can remember going to the Bluebell company store, which was on the so one side of the plant, and, and that's where you got blue jeans and such, mm -hmm. because they had their, their, their discount, the company store there. Before it moved, uh, they did move uptown mm -hmm. for a while. Um, uh, same thing, just Again, just various things that have happened here in town with um, um, Strauss's and uh, the dime store. There was a sporting goods store. Um, I didn't um, know that. Yes, um, it was run by the Yaney family. And um, then across the street, there was also uh, Blumenthal's. Uh, Blumenthal's was another department store downtown, and down in the basement was the uh, shoe department uh, that Dan, uh, Dan Daniel we mm -hmm. used to work down there. And you'd go down there for shoes and, and clothes and such and fabrics. Mm -hmm. uh, it, was, it was where um, then it was Eslick, Gervin, and Lefevre's insurance, and I'm not positive what is in there now, but again, it's uh, that was Blumenthal's. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 McLean and Almsbaugh furniture store further further to the west. A lot of these, a lot of the buildings have been repurposed, or mm -hmm. families have families have have um, have turnover mm -hmm. um, you know a, a son takes over and then there are another family who is associated with them um, um, takes over the mm -hmm. takes over the business and I think you find that in a small town and small communities as you look at some of the some of the small communities through here having lived just outside of Edna mm -hmm. to see the changes um, uh, in some of the small communities Tri Lakes we, uh, sure. my, my, my father lived at Tri Lakes for a, quite a while uh, when he was young. Um, you know, just the, the, uh, the things that happen in small towns that, that businesses are remembered or are always called by that sure. name, whether or, not, whether or not that company or that fam 
excuse me, or whether or not that family still owns the business mm -hmm. or not. In small towns, that's that's what happens. Um, that doesn't happen. Buildings get torn down, and something new gets put mm -hmm. up uh, here. Um, a lot of the time in, in small communities, those businesses or those, those businesses are handed down or the buildings are repurposed for right. something similar. Uh, you know, you can trace them through. Um, un some of the unfortunate things that I've seen have been uh, the bigger box stores mm -hmm. tend to run out some of the smaller businesses. Um, um, you know, we watched. Uh, used to be several small small drug store, not right. drug stores, but uh, and and grocery stores mm -hmm. here in town. Um, we had done playing playing one of the one of the summer baseball games, and we were at one of the root beer barrels, which there used to be two root beer stands here in town. One that was. Uh, out on Lincoln Way going out of town, or what's now Business 30, going out of town to the west, and the other one was on the north edge of town where the one gas station is now. Mm -hmm. um, we were sitting there and saw the, the, the uh, glow in town, and so we went back uptown, and that was when the fruit market um, and Williams uh, IGA Williams Grocery Store burned one of the big fires. It's where um, um, uh, Star Bank's downtown parking mm -hmm. lot is. Used to be where the the big fruit market was. Uh, wooden fruit market, wood building fruit market. It burned and caught the what was the new <laughs> the new <laughs> Williams store. Um, and both of them ended up suffering damage, so they moved out to the where Burger King is mm -hmm. now, which used to be a Kroger store, but Kroger had moved. Williams moved into that store. So uh, a lot of different uh, changes mm -hmm. th that have moved uh, moved buildings through town, and it's it uh, a lot of those small stores. Where Pizza King is now, that used to be the edge of town. That was the north. That was that's what I've been I was told. Small, I mean, there were the cornfields across the town. street. Yeah, yeah, cows. I mean, you know, there were cows <laughs> across the street from that where where the line of churches is now. Uh, that was uh, that was the country. You were done. I mean, you were yeah. you were done. And that Pizza King used to be a little gas station, and um, um, one of the first what I would call a convenience store. There was hmm. little groceries there, it was trimmers, and uh, Carl Harold ran it. And um, you went in and uh, where, the, where the front entrance is now was the front entrance to the store and everything hmm. where the kitchen is now at Pizza King, there were groceries and, and such lined there. Wow. And the big ice cream the ice cream cooler was mm. just to the right, which I happen to know real well where the ice cream <laughs> cooler was because that was about uh, less than a block from grandmother's house. Uh, um, so, but then the churches, churches were built there. Uh, the, one, the one root bear stand was put up about in the parking lot of where the gas station is on the west side further, mm. further north. Um, and things just slowly started expanding until uh, 30 was built. Um, Lincoln Way used to run right through town, mm -hmm. and that was how you went from Fort Wayne to Warsaw, came right through Columbia City. Um, the 30 Club was, was where the VFW, no, where the blue building that's, that's the across, the, yes, yeah. across from the, uh, Across mm -hmm. from uh, CJ's, mm -hmm. that used to be that used to be the Thirty Club mm -hmm. until there was until there was a fire there and they moved. Um, then they moved out to they moved out onto Frontage Road, and then when they closed, it became El Commodore, and then a fire there. Uh, closed El Commodore and the building is now a multi-use building. Uh, there's a couple of colleges that were there. A few months ago someone donated to us some old 30 Club menus uh, 
and we were just giggling because you know oh, like yeah, shrimp prices. cocktail was 15 cents yes. come on really yes. <laughs> you know. <laughs> yes, and, uh, prices have prices have made a, a distinct change. Um, there was another restaurant downtown that that was um, again on the north side of West Van Buren, uh, Dew's restaurant, run by the. Uh, I remember when it was run by the Cleland family, and um, uh, again you would go in and. And it was the old Art Deco, mm -hmm. basically Art Deco restaurant. Um, uh, <laughs> and there were a couple of places that I was that 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 as a young boy you they weren't allowed. I, number one, I wasn't allowed. Number two, they basically frightened me oh. a little bit. Um, across the street from each other, uh, uh, across an alley from each other, were the um, the Boat Club and the Stag. And the stag was was the boat club was was a card room bar and and that was okay but the stag was your basic dark smoke filled oh. yeah a little frightening uh, but the two places were right across the right across the alley from each other and and one became one became the alley as a bar uh, which. I worked there and bartended there for about three years uh, when Dick Rass, uh, not Dick, but his dad, uh, Rassel, um, gosh, I can't think of his name now, but it was, it was mm -hmm. a mom and pop place, a mom and pop bar. It was like, you knew everybody who mm -hmm. came in, you knew what they drank, you knew, you know, what it was going to be. Um, then it became the uh, eventually became the Northside Grill, mm -hmm. and now I think they're they're renovating again. It may become business or offices yeah. or something. I'm not sure what the purpose is yet. But uh, again, the building, the the other one became uh, has been a variety of places yeah. now. Uh, the the old Stag, uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. That that those places right you kinda of walk by and you'd pee as as a as a boy, you'd kinda of peek in through the windows what you could see because they were just dark and dingy and, and, and such. But uh, then further north across the uh, further west on Van Buren was the old bamboo. Mm -hmm. uh, the bamboo which became was uh, I can remember after I was considerably older shooting pool in the bamboo mm -hmm. where we go for lunch. When you were working downtown, you'd go to the bamboo for lunch and shoot pool. Um, um, again, not always the best reputation, but you know, it was it was it was a step up from those places that scared me when I was younger. <laughs> uh, it became the Billy Goat, and then it was another restaurant bar. Yeah. And then I, I don't remember the, the the sequencing, but then it became the uh, now it is a an electronics yeah. store. Um, again, we've done a pretty good job of repurposing buildings here. Um, there have been there have been redevelopment efforts to upgrade facades and, mm -hmm. and such, which um, you know, in any time of a small community, if you can keep the downtown uh, keep the downtown vital, um, it's 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 a good thing, and it's going to continue to be a good thing, especially if. Uh, it was funny. I was doing some research about. Uh, the 60s mm -hmm. and we put out a um, we put out a booklet uh, no it was the 70s I'm sorry we put out a, a, at the post and mail they put out a book of headlines and newspaper pages from mm -hmm. the 70s and in going through and doing the research for that I came up with a, a, a highway plan to make to make uh, US 30 a limited access highway and to, um, uh, to chain, put overpass in at 109 mm -hmm. and, and also to figure out a way of clover leaf at nine, at Indi where Indiana 9 crosses. Um, and it's kind of funny to listen to them talk now about making US 30 a limited access <laughs> highway. 
uh, you know, you're you're only about 30, 40 years, right. 40, 45 years <laughs> late on that process. <laughs> but um, if that comes to pass, it's it's again going to mark just as putting putting the 30, which sure. was the bypass but, around Columbia City, uh, just as that caused a lot of, of drastic changes and the downtown, for a while the downtown area really uh, struggled because businesses moved out to, mm -hmm. uh, Kroger's moved out there, uh, the, uh, Schultz's moved mm -hmm. out. Uh, the you know, a lot of the a lot of the businesses that occupied buildings downtown moved out to uh, to take advantage of, of US 30 uh, the the new US 30 as opposed to Lincoln Way mm -hmm. um, but I think the, the downtown has has understood that it's going to be small businesses downtown that are going to make it and the big businesses, the, the big box stores mm -hmm. and such are going to move out. Now, if US 30 becomes a limited access, I'm not positive how, well, I have an idea how that's going to affect because we have a plethora of, of fast foods, mm -hmm. fast food restaurants uh, <clears throat> along that US 30 corridor. And with limited access, I'm not sure how many of those are going to survive. Right. That's 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 something that will remain to be seen, um, along with along with some of the. I don't know if it'll affect and and whether we'll see more businesses on this side of 30 catering to those people who choose not to not mm -hmm. to figure out how to get across right. how to get across 30 um, uh, to do their shopping which now is north and their stoplights so it's not a problem but I, I, I'm not sure how they will deal with things if it's if it's cut back to a um, frontage road mm -hmm. situations limited accesses um, Another thing in the area is, is the demise of some of the some of the uh, historic buildings, um, small old school buildings mm -hmm. that were um, those those little town not the township schools but even the earlier school buildings. Right. There's one south on nine that's not there any longer. Yeah. That was an interesting looking building uh, that are just architecturally interesting. Um, to watch how some of these buildings, uh, you know, again, the Peabody Mansion has been repurposed, was repurposed as a funeral home. The Tully Mansion was repurposed as a funeral home because of their size and the number of rooms they, they, they uh, that fit well. Um, uh, the uh, Marshall House is now the Willie County Historical Museum. Um, we've done a pretty good job with some of them, but right now the the old Hooper House, uh, which is at the corner, it's the southwest corner of Jefferson and Chauncey. Um, it's got a coat of paint, but I, I've seen the inside when there were some damages done in the inside. Yeah. It's it's going to Kids take work. an awful lot of oh, work yeah. to to revamp that, which I, I would love to see that house revamped. Oh, it it's be a marvelous. beautiful house, yeah. and and it's an and it's in a and uh, it's in the beginnings of of a historic neighborhood. Mm -hmm. That Chauncey Street, uh, the large house across the street from it. Um, uh, the Peabody Peabody Mansion on the on the opposite corner, um, the the Marshall House, and then all the really large. Uh, what was the Silk Stocking mm -hmm. District of Columbia City down Chauncey Street? They 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 redid the the street, rebricked the street, which was a major project, and there are several several large old homes oh, along yeah. there that are that are just beautiful homes. Uh, it'd be nice to see the Hooper House, which I, I, I don't know how many people know that the Hooper House was home to Lucy Hooper, who was uh, Thomas Marshall's intended, uh, who unfortunately passed away shortly before they were to be married, uh, took sick and died. 
and Marshall uh, essentially became an alcoholic based on that until he until who the lady who would become his wife basically dragged him out of <laughs> dragged him out of that um, and and he became very successful um, but the Hooper house was that's mm -hmm. that's that was where Lucy Hooper was um, uh, I remember it having gone to the Methodist Church, which was just on the corner, I remember that house as being the Christian Science, mm -hmm. uh, it was the Christian Science Monitor Room, uh, the Christian Science Reading Room mm -hmm. for, for a long time. Um, again, some of those houses, you've, you've, you've known the families that have, mm -hmm. that have lived there um, on the outskirts of Aetna, the Stanfield, Stansfield family lived in the very large brick building. The Knapps were across the street in another very large building on the outskirts of, on the outskirts of Aetna. Um, having an, another part of Whitley County history, having worked as director of Camp Whitley for, mm. for 11 years, um, again, an opportunity for, uh, I mean, we were getting the grandchildren and in some cases the great-grandchildren of campers as campers. Isn't um, that amazing? So you're talking some families that Camp Whitley has been a three and four generation uh, experience for them. And it's um, great that it's still relevant today. Oh yes, I mean, yes. You know. I mean it's a, it's a, it's a, uh, the, 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 Sports camps took their toll, um, but I think you know parents are still understanding that it's an old-time summer mm -hmm. camp. I mean, it's a residential summer camp. There's boating, there's swimming, there's archery, there's crafts, there's uh, you know those mm -hmm. those types of things that are recreational and revitalizing, as opposed to the okay, you know. I, I'm not against sports camps. Sports right, have sure, been a part of sure. all, part of my life for a long time, but there's a certain a certain pressure that comes with those sports mm -hmm. camps, and a certain pressure uh, to succeed in those that's not at at the yeah. camp is there well, for I'm those kids to, man to get away from home. <laughs> right. And, and I still have all of those stories along with the ones that, that I started, uh, you know, when I was there. Um, it's, you know, we've had, uh, my, my children are the third generation of people who worked there. Oh, wow. Um, my, wife's, my wife's father was a director. She and I were cooks before we were directors, mm -hmm. and then took a hiatus while my oldest son was a uh, my oldest son was program director and counselor. Mm -hmm. My youngest son was program director and wow. counselor. Um, uh, yes, it, I, I did two stints out there, so the. the the family understands the understands the importance of it and the fact that this is the first trip away from home for some mm -hmm. of the, some of the Absolutely. kids. Absolutely. Um, when we when we first took the camp over from um, as directors from uh, the two Dans Dans Curlis and Dan Mullet, um, we had a little boy who who knew where we lived. He lived up the street a couple about a block or so, and he came down, knocked on our door. And he goes, my name is DJ Grable. I'm six years old, and I want to go to camp. Aww. Uh, <laughs> and those are the kind of those are the you know that's the place that camp has mm -hmm. has here in in our mm -hmm. in our history. Um, uh, I had uh, I knew Jack Squires, who was a jeweler here in town, and Jack was amongst the first campers uh, in 1928 out there uh, and he'd tell the stories about how the the cost of camp was a bag of groceries and the the, the there was a cook who came and cooked and you know and, and uh, again we've had a lot of people who have come through who have worked there or been campers um, 
the one year we were there, we had people from we had people from six different states, and came as far away as Arizona to come back to come back to Whitley County to mm -hmm. live in a live in a <laughs> little cabin. Last time I was there, it was it was pit toilets and oh. no showers, <laughs> and you bathed in the lake. Yeah, and yet we had people come from Arizona who would send their children. You know, who would send their kids, and they would mm -hmm. drive to Whitley County from Arizona and from Illinois wow. and from Indianapolis. We had a, a, a whole section of people from Indianapolis who came, and they would drive and and and, and bring their kids and go. Mm -hmm. Okay, you know, here here this is where this is where mom was, or this is where dad mm -hmm. was, or this is where grandpa was, and they would walk around and they would tell us. You know, here's this, here's this, here's what this was. We had one year a member of the Tinkham family who owned the woods and mm -hmm. owned the land. We had a member of the uh, of the Tinkham family come out in an old Model T and 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 talk to the kids and and you know it's just a part of it is a part of Whitley mm -hmm. County's history. Uh, Ninety years. Um, you know, um, to have a to have a residential camp in a small area, a, 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 a small years. area for ninety years. I remember our one year, we had over four hundred kids come through camp in six weeks' time. Um, I don't know that we have those numbers now, just because of the variety of mm -hmm. things that are available to kids during the summer. Um, for us, summer baseball. You know, you played. Mm -hmm. You played while school was still in session, and you played Fourth of July. Now, basically, is the end of summer baseball because then you have travel teams mm -hmm. and all of that. Fourth of July was the middle of the season. Sure. I mean, we had the Fourth of July tournament, and then you played through till school started mm -hmm. again. In fact, a little bit. You know, the season didn't end until after school started, which, by the way, was after. Labor Day. Yes. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> um, you know, those were, that was, that was a, a huge thing down at DeVol Field. And, you mm -hmm. know, the, the, the little building that I don't think is there anymore, the little building at DeVol Field, which was the concession mm -hmm. stand. And Roy Kilby was, uh, you know, Roy Kilby ran, ran that baseball program down there, oversaw, oversee, um, uh, just a huge number of, of Pee Wee League, Minor League, Major League, uh, Babe Ruth, Pony League, uh, boys and girls, uh, you know, just a huge number of kids went through there. That's also where the fireworks were, the right. fireworks, 4th of July. And yep. I remember you could, sitting on the Legion. Yep, si well, or sitting on the hill there in the uh -huh. whole field that they use for sledding mm -hmm. now. The, on that hill was where everybody sat to watch the fireworks, and um, if you were lucky, if you were one of the one of the baseball kids, you could sell popcorn, and you'd sell popcorn uh, through the crowd until until it got dark. Mm -hmm. And for however many bags of popcorn you sold, you get free treats at the concession stand. That was how that was how uh. Roy paid the paid the kids who sold the. <laughs> Who sold the popcorn, and you know there was there was probably a lot of people who who have gone through that program who sold popcorn mm. for, who sold popcorn for Roy. Um, that and if you caught three foul balls and returned them to the concession stand, you got a free treat. Uh, <laughs> it was um, yeah, just a. a you know, and and you had teams from from virtually every township. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, one or more teams from every township. There was that kind of participation in summer in in summer baseball because mm -hmm. other than swimming and and playing baseball, for most kids that was summer. Right. Sure. Um, you know, there wasn't there wasn't basketball camp. There wasn't mm -hmm. uh, such and such. You either played baseball or you went swimming. Yep. <laughs> um, or you ran around with your friends. That was that was that was summer. Uh, living at Goose Lake, you go down to the sea, you go down and go swimming. Um, you know, um, or you played baseball on the vacant lot next to our house. Um, <laughs> those were that was that was summer. Um, 
I, I, I bemoan the fact that kids have gotten so busy and so many things yeah. that a lot of them don't have time to be, <laughs> they don't kids. have time to just, yeah. just play during the summer. Um, that and the summers have gotten shorter. Uh -huh. um, you know, now you're down to two and a half months, maybe. Um, I, 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 I don't know that we're doing anybody a service by that, but that's just me editorializing. Yeah. Um, let's see, anything, I'm just trying to think through things um, uh, and how things have changed. Um, we still, Whitley County, we still deal with a lot of family farms, mm -hmm. which is, is uh, as opposed to some of the larger, some of the communities where I've seen a lot of large corporation right. type they farms. Right, they come in and just take yes. over. A lot of the family farms are corporations now, but they're still held within the families. Mm -hmm. with, you know, in Whitley County here, you know, you've always known the Schraders. You've known the cops. You've known um, all of those people that uh, the people that have family mm -hmm. farms. Uh, you know, we moved from the lake to a 20-acre farm, and and to watch Dad out on a tractor with a two-bottom plow <laughs> plowing plowing the, the clay knobs of Thorn Creek Town, Thorn Creek Township, and and and. Yeah, there's still a lot of those those sure. family farms. Sure. It's harder and harder for them to make a living as strictly a family farm, but uh, that's one of the big changes that uh, I think farming has become the minority as mm -hmm. opposed to as opposed to probably uh, 75 years ago, mm -hmm. where farming was a majority in, in this area. Um, Yes, um, highway changes uh, have brought about big changes. I think if if the um, if the thirty becoming a limited access will will bring about the next big wave right. of changes right. here. I think opening the opening the new high school will be will be another interesting side effect because I look down I drive. Uh, when I go to cover a ball game mm -hmm. at uh, Homestead, I drive down uh, uh, down sure. the Whitley Allen County sure. Line Road, and on one side, you have housing additions in Southwest Allen that are huge housing additions, mm -hmm. uh, large houses, uh, a lot of single family, and on the Whitley County side, you have farm ground farmers. <laughs> yeah, you've got empty empty ground. Mm -hmm. um, I just see that after opening the new school, uh, some of those people, some developers, going to make a farmer mm -hmm. on the on the west side, on the Whitley County side, a an offer he can't refuse, and the draw of a new school yeah. and lower tax rates is going to be enough to put a lot of people moving oh, from sure. the. <laughs> just across the yeah, road. Yeah, just across the road, actually. But it, yeah. it'll it'll move into the Whitley County. Yeah. Into Whitley County well, and into the. Going to be a big uh, old school. school. Yes, it's, <laughs> it's a big school. Um, it'll be interesting to see if it's big enough. Um, yeah. Because, you know, again, we had that influx of families from uh, Puerto Rico. Mm -hmm. Um, I think you'll see another influx of families moving into the uh, southeast portion of Whitley County, uh, jumping across that county line road. Mm -hmm. um, I think the population here, um, and we have that, we have that, um, I think the population will increase and we also have the draw that Whitley County has been, you know, basically a bedroom community. Mm -hmm. um, there's there there is business and there is industry with SDI and 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 but they've managed to keep it fairly compartmentalized. Right. Um, oh, that yes, and that reminds me of another business, the old Weatherhead. Uh, oh, this yeah. time of year, you would uh, dad would take uh, dad worked at Weatherhead mm -hmm. and he would take all the kids. And we would go out to see Santa at Weatherhead, the Weatherhead Christmas party, and there were always gifts 
that mm-hmm. that you came home with big fire trucks and and stuff and oranges, and and uh, you know again that was the the factories that were here in town had a lot of of family. They were considerably more personal mm-hmm. than a lot of the factories are now. Um, I, yes, I, I I just recall that being you know you knew the people you knew you knew their kids. Oh yeah. As a kid, you knew their kids. It was it was very community uh, a lot more community based than than what we have now. But um, again, I I. I, I think the big changes that are coming again, that the, the new school will make a big difference. Mm-hmm. I think the um, I think the uh, the possibility of thirty becoming limited access is going to require a lot of adjustments, oh, and will make a lot of adjustments both economically and geographically as far as where people where people are locating. Um, I think the emphasis has been so far to shift people north mm-hmm. um, because the farmland to the south is flat and and much more. Right. Uh, again, I spoke of the clay knobs of, of Thorn Creek mm-hmm. Township. Um, I'll be interested to see what happens with the school moving south and out of town, mm-hmm. what happens to... Uh, you know, fortunately, I live in Hilltop, which is yeah. I right, say our our neighborhood. Yes, right, <laughs> right where we are. Um, property values, I think, will remain will remain constant. I think yeah. right now, um, our our draw is the fact, and and our house burned down, mm-hmm. and we rebuilt in the same place because we had boys going to the high school, mm-hmm. and I said, you yeah, know. God, they can walk. We, you know, there's right. no need for us to drive them anywhere. You can walk to the high school faster than I can drive. All got to be driven. Yes, and and now it's going to be a situation where uh, I I think they're working on a process of of walking paths to get to that campus. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's still going to be a hike from the city. Sure. Uh, I don't think it's going to affect affect property values in that area because they put the new aquatic center mm-hmm. in. And so now you have, uh, and, and you have, the, a, 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 as, as one of our granddaughters said when we went there, she said uh, when we went the first couple times that it was mm-hmm. open, we went and they said, can you believe this is Whitley, this is in Columbia City? Yeah. Uh, because it is quite a, quite a, uh, a very state-of-the-art, very nice facility, and um, um, the pool was was very important. But this mm-hmm. this facility is 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 way way beyond. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. Way beyond the pool, <laughs> and depending on what happens to the land where the school is, I think it's being. I think it, the the arrangement is is that that land where the high school sits now is going to be given back to the city. Now, what the city does with it, I think the back part becomes part of the because it runs all the way to the river. Sure. Uh, the back part, I think, becomes part of Morsh's Park, mm-hmm. um, which is fine because there's a woods back there. Mm-hmm. Uh, it used to be the old cross country course ran through back there, and and uh, so there's some interesting topographical mm-hmm. things back there. The front part, parking for the aquatic center and green space. They're I saying don't know. a lot of green space. I'm not sure what they're going to do with the track. Yeah. Uh, the track, there's a lot of people who use the track oh, for yeah. walking purposes, so I don't know whether what will happen there, but that's, that's going to be, again, another adjustment, another phase. We just, we've watched the city go through being downtown oriented, then it was north oriented and the downtown was having problems figuring out mm-hmm. what what are we going to do with the downtown we've seen a revitalization oh, of big. the downtown um, restaurant uh, uh, businesses small businesses mm-hmm. which have figured out okay this is our niche this sort of thing so uh, you know the cities the cities who prosper and grow have reason that you know there's reasons mm-hmm. for that to happen uh, one is and their ability to adjust 
Yes. And, and I think we've seen that ability to adjust uh, things moving even, even before the change from Lincoln Way to the 30, which mm -hmm. everybody called the bypass for a long time. Right. Now they just call it 30. Um, the changes there have allowed have allowed the city to adjust mm -hmm. and, and gradually economically they figured out okay this is what we have to do to survive here um, we're seeing businesses and buildings repurposed the presbyterian church the old oh, presbyterian yeah. church is now an antique mall mm -hmm. um, uh, again making use of of the the current buildings Rather than tearing down I mean, and I think starting that's over, marvelous. and I mean, and finding a proper use a use that fits for them, um, uh, has has worked well for the city. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, the county, um, the county again making that shift from in in certain cases from farming to uh, residential. Mm -hmm. um, we're seeing little plats of right. five six houses where there used to be a farm field. Um, um, and as the population population shifts from Fort Wayne into Whitley County, those little five, six house plots are going to be important. And but I think you're going to see also larger plots Big along ones. that yeah. along that county line road. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, again, I think the theme is is uh, adapt to the changes, and I think uh, you know the, 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 we've done that. We've kept those things that we've kept those things that have worked well. Mm -hmm. The Camp Whitley's, the uh, you know the small town atmosphere mm -hmm. to certain things, um, and then to adapt to those. Uh, uh, like I say, to to adapt to the changes when we need to. Um, yep. Yeah. All right. Yep. You you are a wealth here, Mark. <laughs> so we appreciate you coming down and talking Thank to you. us today, and um, keep telling us about Whitley County. <laughs>